Well, good evening, everybody. It is good to see you. I am glad you're here. Hope you've had a wonderful afternoon. And we're just going to have us a grand time in the house of the Lord. We've got a special time for you, special service planned. It really wasn't planned, planned. It was kind of, this is what we're going to do, planned. And uh, so you just need to go with the flow because we never do anything different around here. Uh, but anyway, we're just going to have a good time, and I'm glad, glad that you're here. So let's bow our heads together in prayer, and uh, we'll, just, we'll just jump right in. Father, we thank you for the privilege it is to be able to be in the house of the Lord with God's people. And Father, just pray your blessing on the service tonight. Pray that, Lord, you just work in hearts and move in our in our midst in such a marvelous way. And Lord, we'll, we'll praise you and thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's stand together and uh, we'll get going. Yeah, let's start off with hymn number th 438. 400, oh. <laughs> I've got it written down wrong on, on the screen. It's 438, Jesus saves. <laughs> we have heard the joyful sound Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves, onward to Revive us again. Re revive us again. Revive us, oh Lord. Revive us again. Re we praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. that everything in our lives needs to bring glory to him. There's, there's nothing we do of ourselves that he hasn't given us ability to do and hasn't empowered us and protected us all throughout the way. So all glory and praise, everything goes to him. 
song because think about it it says fire before us that's a throwback to the old testament the children of israel being led through the wilderness on the way to the promised land what are they doing they're following the pillar of fire at night the pillar of cloud by day they're following where god led them and let me just take an aside right here the the blessing that we have right here is we have a leader we have a pastor who takes us where the word leads him and when we follow God's leading through Scripture, through uh, through the Holy Spirit's leading our lives, He will lead us safe to shore. I, I love that truth. So uh, now we, we're gonna we're gonna have different something different. 
back. I, I gave up my mic, but I tell you all the time that I'm so thankful for choir concerts because it's a praise time, it's a worship time, and we have a wonderful time. And I had a heavy heart when I was a kid. It's on. Okay, I'll tell you again. I, I just have to tell you all the time I give the testimony that choir practice is an encouragement to my heart. It lifts my spirits and we praise and we worship. And I came with a heavy heart when I came to church choir practice this evening, and God just blessed me and touched my heart and spoke to my heart through our practice, and this song was one we were practicing for the future, and it just, I said, okay, I'm going to do something radical. <laughs> we're going to sing this tonight, and you are going to hear it again in the near future, but it's all about Jesus. He's as close as the mention of his name. Amen.
Thank you, choir. We don't generally get to hear from the choir on Sunday evenings, but I am thankful that we did. I think that's the first time we've done that in memory. Um, all right. Well, again, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Um, Brother Joe, come here just a minute, would you? Um, Teresa, where's... Come back this way. I just you're you're my test case. Okay. I want you to give me one thing. I know you can give me a lot, but I want you to give me one thing that you're thankful for. Yeah, I got a lot. Um, <laughs> how about how about health and uh, and God's good grace day by day? Thank you. That was expeditious. That was ex very very now. Okay. Now, what I'd like for you to do, and we're going to, we're going to do this expeditiously. I don't need a lot of background. Just I want one thing that you're thankful for, one thing. I know it's hard, especially whenever you get a group of folks that love the Lord and all that, and you just, you just got a whole long list of things that God has done for you, things that you want to thank God for. Why don't you give me one thing? So raise your hand. Teresa's going to bring you to the microphone. The one thing that I'm very, very thankful for is that there's a God in heaven, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, sir. I'm thankful that uh, I've been married to Luann for 45 years. I'm supposed to stand up and I'm supposed to eat this thing. I'm thankful that I've been married to Luann for 45 years and that she did not wise up after even 30. <laughs> that was mine, too. <laughs> Two for one special. Past Friday was your anniversary. Well, happy, happy 40, 45 years. We did not anesthetize her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thankful for a safe trip to and from Ohio. I am so thankful that I did not get a broken bone. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Thankful, thankful for God's protection. I'm thankful for Dan and. Oh. <laughs> I'm thankful for our church family. This isn't real spiritual, but I'm thankful for air conditioning. Amen. <laughs> I'm very thankful for volleyball, and I'm getting to do a lot of it this summer, so that makes me happy. I'm thankful for my grandkids, every one of them. Especially me. <laughs> I'm, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the peace that we have with God in such a crazy world. I'm thankful that God spared my stepmom's um, life this week. She's uh, still in ICU. But I believe God spared her life long enough for my dad to be safe. So I'm praying for my dad to be safe. And uh, I'm thankful. Uh, I come from a communist country. I'm thankful for this country that welcomed me in. And, uh, and I'm just thankful for the freedom in this country. I'm thankful for God's saving grace. God for my salvation. I'm thankful for Jesus. Thankful for God's unfailing love. Okay. 
I'm thankful that I don't have to deal with my sister for six hours next week. Oh, for I am thankful for you. Aww. One thing. I'm thankful that we are. Uh, I'm thankful that there's such a thing as the summer break. I'm thankful that I finally don't have to deal with math. Yay for no math. I am thankful for being a witness for Jesus. Amen. I am thankful for the beach. Yes. I'm thankful for prayer and prayer warriors that pray for us. I'm thankful for the, the written word that we can follow. And I'm thankful for Pastor and our wonderful church family. Of course it is. Make me come all the way back there again. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thankful she didn't throw the microphone to her. Hey, we've done that before. It was successful. Anyway, um, I am thankful for my little girl and how much she loves Jesus. We, she told me the other day, Teresa took her and Grace to the beach, and Briley said, Mommy, I told two people about Jesus when she got home. And so I'm just so thankful. And then this morning when we went to the gas station, she wanted to give the lady a, a track. So it just touches my heart how much she is in love with Jesus and wants other people to know. From our live stream this evening, Miss Dina uh, Myrick says that she's thankful for healing and for God's mercy. I'm thankful for God's provisions always and his mercy. I'm thankful for my mother and father and that they're they're still with us. They're still healthy, relatively healthy. It's Peter. What am I? I'm thankful for my church family. Uh, I really am. I'm, um, and I, I don't mean that. I don't mean that lightly. Um, you guys are a blessing to me in more ways than I can tell you. And I'm not being expeditious because uh, I've got I've got time. Uh, I know that, that that breaks the rules, doesn't it? I'm thankful for my church family. Now, one day I'll tell you all the reasons why. First Peter chapter three. Um, we kind of went started in this, and then it went. Kind of went in a different direction on me last week, <clears throat> and I believe the Lord was in that. I shared, just shared some things from my heart to you uh, last week because, um, well, because it was on my heart, and I believe that uh, ministry is a very important thing. We're losing, we're losing the sight of ministry. We, we, um, ministry is intended. Please listen to what I'm about to say. Ministry is intended <clears throat> to be a blessing to others. Okay? Jesus said he did not come to be ministered to, but to be to minister, but not to be ministered to. And that's that's the calling of the church. We uh, we are to be ministry minded. And that's that includes being soul conscious. Which means that handing out tracts and things like that. We have, we have little cards on the Welcome Center back there. If you don't have some in your wallet or in your purse, then you need to put some in your wallet and purse and hand them out wherever you go. Um, we had a lady here at church this morning. My wife shared it with, with a choir uh, that uh, she and her, was it her daughter? Her daughter, this is the first time they'd been in church ever. Because somebody from our church family invited her 
from a park. They were at a park somewhere. And they just invited them to church, and they came. So I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm thankful for the, the number of visitors. We had, we had several first-time guests with us today. Um, one young lady that was um, um, just really seemed to enjoy the, the opportunity to, uh, to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, the lady and her daughter could not stay for church. She, they had to leave. I guess they had something else they had to go do. But she came with the promise that she's coming back. Now, here's the other thing you need to know. We had several returning guests this morning as well. Always excited about returning guests. But I want to talk to you tonight about the ministry of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus had, um, uh, had a ministry with, uh, with folks. I mean, you, you, read through the, uh, you read through the scriptures, especially the gospels, and you find the ministry, the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus detailed to us. Um, given uh, the, the Word of God gives us everything that God wanted us to know about the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus. We know that not everything is written down because the Gospel of John tells us that. Um, many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So, there are things, multitudes, I'm guessing, multitudes of things that Jesus did in 33 and a half years <clears throat> that ministered to the life of people. We know about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. We know about uh, Jesus giving sight to a blind man. We know about Jesus raising folks from the dead. Um, we, we know about those things. Jesus broke up a funeral. Now, you don't find that amusing? Because I, I just think it is. <laughs> Jesus put his hand, the Bible says, on the buyer. That's the casket. Stop the funeral and raise the kid to life. That's, a, that's the God that we serve. So uh, everything, everything that Peter has talked about up to this point, he starts out talking to um, husbands and wives and their relationship. Uh, then he gives us, uh, some godly principles by which we ought to live. And now he talks about ministry. Um, he ministers, he's talking about ministry to others because others was the central theme in the life of the Lord Jesus. So I want to talk to you about, if you look at verse 18 um, down to verse 22 is where we're going with this, uh, if we get that far tonight. But we want to talk to you about the ministry of the Lord Jesus. We kind of hopped in and out of some of these things, but I, when I got home last Sunday night, the Lord convicted me. So... I'm going to share with you what I have here to share with you because the Lord convicted me to do that. So if, if, if some of it sounds familiar, it's because we talked about it last week, but we didn't get everything, and evidently the Lord wanted more than I gave you, so here we go. Uh, everything else in 1 Peter chapter 3 uh, is, uh, is pointing to the ministry and the life of the Lord Jesus. In chapter 2, verse 21, Peter presented Jesus Christ as the perfect example of one who suffered unjustly and yet obeyed God. Even though we talked about Joseph this morning, remember? He suffered unjustly and yet he still obeyed God and served God. Um, <clears throat> there, there are four areas that Peter covers here. Verse 18, he talks about the death of the Lord Jesus. If you want to look there, chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, For Christ who also hath once suffered for our... For sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to the to God, um, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Um, the death of the Lord Jesus. Aren't you thankful that Jesus was willing to come and die? Uh, he didn't have to do that. He came to a cesspool, and here we are. Jesus is still loving us. Uh, verse seventeen. Peter wrote about the suffering. Uh, for those that suffer for well-doing uh, rather than evil-doing. And then uh, he follows that with the example of the Lord Jesus in verse 18. Jesus died as my substitute. Uh, he, and he died only once, by the way. That's what, that's what uh, Paul tells us in the book of Hebrews. He died only once. 
There will never be another Calvary because there doesn't need to be. Now, the reason Peter said, or the reason Paul said that is because uh, he's, he's talking about two different covenants. He's talking about the Old Covenant, the Old Testament days, when they had to sacrifice uh, lambs and bulls and goats, and they had to have a sacrifice, a sprinkle of blood on the mercy seat, uh, and they did that once a year for the covering of sin. Now, that's important because the blood of bulls and goats could only cover sin. It did not eliminate sin like the blood of Jesus Christ does. The blood of Jesus Christ washes you clean. As a, uh, as a repentant sinner, you come to him uh, re- uh, repenting and turning from your sin, turning to the Savior, and knowing that he will save all that will call upon him. So the blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. That's what the Bible says. It's not just the- theology talk. That's the truth of the scriptures, that the, that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. He was our substitute, and he died only once. So Peter is pointing out that Jesus suffered for well-doing. He did not die because of his own sins. He died for your sin and for mine. Because we're sinners, Jesus died. He was the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That's what John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus coming. He, he pointed to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And that's exactly what Jesus will do for everyone that will turn from their sin and repentance and call on his name and receive him as their savior, um, he will save all that will call upon him. Now, John was not in any uh, any way, shape, or form referring to the fact that Jesus was coming to take away the sin of the world and that whenever Jesus died at Calvary, everybody's sin was was forgiven. (coughs) That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that means that there has to be a determined point, a point in your heart and in your life when you gave your heart to Jesus and he saved you because he will save you if you will ask him to because the Bible says that he will save you if you ask him to do that because whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So um, we're not talking about universal salvation, we're talking about individual salvation and I'm thankful that God is still in the soul saving business. But it gets better than that. Because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, and because he walked out of the tomb the third day, the Bible says that now we may come boldly to the throne of grace. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. That's what Paul said in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. We are invited. We are welcome. I tell you, my heart was blessed tonight as I stood in, a, in my office with a group of men that wanted to pray for this service tonight. What a blessing that is. And folks... Uh, as long as we have folks that are loving the Lord and loving the ministry and praying for it, then it will always do what it's designed to do. The ministry isn't here to coddle you. Did you know that? <laughs> it's not here to coddle you. It's here. We, we meet Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night to encourage you, to encourage you to live for Jesus and to share Jesus with others. Now, I don't know about you, but I need that encouragement. I need your fellowship. I need to be able to come in, shake your hand, hug your neck, and just hear you share things like, hey, I'm thankful for whatever you're thankful for. I need to hear that. So you, and you know, we, um, <laughs> I guess that's for the folks that think, well, you know, I don't, you don't have to be a, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And you know, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian, but you do if you're going to be a good one. Just saying, who used that phrase this morning? My wife, I think, talking to the Bible school people. I am thankful that we have the opportunity week in and week out to come together in a place like this to sing hymns. And you know, folks, folks that just that don't come, just miss it, you know? They just miss it. Because, you know, you never know what's going to happen, especially around this place. (laughs) I mean, who knew? I didn't know coming to church tonight the choir was going to sing. My wife didn't know it, but uh, that heart heart blessed her song. I meant that song blessed her heart. And she, uh, she wanted the choir to sing it. And choir, thank you for singing that. 
because I just, I, I love the ministry of music with our choir. <clears throat> I really do, and I, I hope that you do. Um, and uh, if, you, if it blesses your heart, then maybe you ought to get in it and join it. Um, just saying. <laughs> Here's the second thing. Look at verses 19 and 20. For the proclamation of Christ, Peter encourages us uh, in four different areas. He covers these things just to encourage us to do what we ought to do. And I'm, I'm just going to tell you that I don't know everything I ought to know about, uh, uh, about verses 19 and 20, but I'm going to tell you what I think. Here's verse 19. By which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when, uh, when once the long suffering of God waited for in the days of Noah, while the ark wa was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Uh, that's not talking about getting saved by baptism. That's not what that's talking about. Um, the uh, comment that he made in verse 19, uh, I am not a theologian. Um, but I will tell you what I think. Uh, when the Bible says that whenever Jesus was crucified, he died. He died on the cross. Uh, between the time uh, that he walked, that time and the time he walked out of the tomb, he, the Bible says he led captivity captive. Now what I believe that means is that whenever Jesus ascended back to glory, then the folks that were in paradise went with him to glory. Amen. So that's our hope of glory because we, there, um, I think that's what that verse is talking about. In verse 20, um, he's talking about Noah. Noah, God was patient. Noah preached 120 years. God was patient, waited, uh, because it took, it took poor old Noah that long to chop down the trees and to hew the boards and to put it all together. And I, this was a massive ship. It, was, it wasn't some little bitty rowboat out here. It was a massive ship. It had to be because Noah and his family and anybody else that was, that was going to get on the ark, they had to have living quarters for ark floating on the waters long time. <laughs> Um, and they had to have provisions. I mean, it wasn't like the rains came, flooded the earth, killed everybody, and then two days later they were back on solid ground. It wasn't like that. Uh, Noah was on the ark um, a long time, and, and I know I'm supposed to know how long it was. Over a year. Thank you very much. Over a year. A year's a long time. And um, he was there, but... All the time that Noah was building the ark, doing all the things that was necessary to get it ready, not just for the family and anybody else that was going to get on it, but for the animals that God was going to bring. Two by two, here they came. Um, and Noah was a, Peter calls him a preacher of righteousness. So he's preaching and he's sharing with folks the, the truth of the fact that judgment is coming and you can escape the judgment of God if you'll just get on the boat. Why are you building this dumb thing, Noah? You're just dumb. You're just out of your mind. We're not, you're going to, it's going to do what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Noah had never heard of rain. Didn't know what it was. Um, but, buddy, whenever the fountains of the deep broke up and water started falling from heaven, that's something these people had never seen before in their lives. And now all of a sudden, after the judgment had started, now all of a sudden, they come to themselves and think, hey, maybe old Noah had a point here. And old Noah had a point. And here's the truth. Here's how that relates to us today. That is that Jesus is coming back. He is our ark of safety. And if you will trust Christ as your Savior, you can get on the ark. Amen. It's open to anybody, anybody. God will save all that will call upon him. All you got to do is invite Jesus into your heart. Be your Savior. And I'm not talking about coming in here, making a profession of faith, and going back out there living like the devil. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that actually mean business with God, that have a true change of, of uh, direction in their life. That's the word I'm looking for. They have a change of direction because the Bible says we are new creatures when we trust Christ. All things are passed away. That old life, all that stuff... Don't go back to that. 
Because God, God saved you out of that. Amen. Now, Christians, every single day are tempted to go back to that lifestyle. I know that because Paul talked about it in Galatians chapter 5. He said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You can go back if you want to, but you will suffer in the day, in the, uh, in the day of Jesus Christ. When you stand before the Lord, you have to give an account of yourself, and you will. Amen. Every single, you have, listen, here I am, I'm waving a, waving a red lantern here saying, you're going to stand before the Lord, you and you and you and you and, me, and this one right here. We're all going to stand before the Lord, and we're going to have to give account. We're going to have to stand before him and give account. I'm not going to have to give account for, for anybody else but me. And so I'm, I want to do what honors the Lord with my life. I want, to, I want to do what honors the Lord with my ministry. You know, some of you think I'm strange, and I do strange things, and I, I think strangely, and I... And I and I do the business of ministry string and strange. And some folks think that I go about the ministry wrong. But folks, I'm going about the ministry that God has given me here at Faith Baptist Church in the direction that I believe the Lord is leading me. So all I ask you to do is trust me. But I bet you've heard that before too. But I'm not a used car salesman. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you the truth that Jesus is coming back. And there, when Jesus comes back, I mean... It, and says, and I believe when the trump sounds, Jesus is going to say, come up hither. Amen. Um, and then we're, we're out of here. We're gone. Jesus is coming back to take us home. Because this ain't home. And that's terrible English. But it's great theology. This is not home. I'm going to a place that, God, that Jesus said he was going to prepare for me. And for you, and for you, and for you. Jesus is going to prepare for us a place. Can you imagine how spectacular that's going to be? I sincerely believe that whatever we walk into when we get into glory and see all the things that is there, um, it's going to make the Taj Mahal look like the slums. It really is. But God is preparing that. For you and for me. And so we need to proclaim him. Noah did. That's the example that Peter's giving. Noah did it for 120 years. He just, he pounded and preached. Pounded and preached. Saying, hey, judgment of God's coming. And I'm just, I just want you to know. And I want to tell you. I want to raise a red flag. I want to raise a red flag and just tell you that you have been warned. You know, there are. There are parents that take their children everywhere under the sun on Sunday. Some of them think that they're going to be the next great gymnast in the Olympics. Some of them that think that they're going to be the next great linebacker in the NFL or the next great shortstop in Major League Baseball or the next great point guard in Major League Basketball or whatever the positions are in hockey. I don't have any idea what the positions are in hockey or soccer. But <clears throat> there is, do you know what the percentages are of a child that plays Little League Baseball ever playing in the major leagues? They are minuscule. Now, it does happen. But the odds are so tiny. But do you realize, uh, I don't know what the percentage is. It's point zero zero something that your child will ever play in the major league anything. But it, there is a 100% chance that your child will stand before God. Amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, we need, to, we need to get them into God's house. I'm just telling you, you've been warned. You will stand before the Lord one day, and I'm going to have to give an account. And I'm thankful that I don't have to give an account for you, and you're thankful that you don't have to give an account for me. I'm telling you. It's, it's that way. But we are going to stand before him. Here's the third thing. Look down at verse 21. And please, please listen to me carefully. Verse 21. He says, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God 
by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Boy, I tell you, whenever we start talking about the resurrection, we just get excited, don't we? I mean, it's, it's hanky-waving time. That, you guys need to get you a handkerchief, man. You, gotta, you guys need to follow along. <laughs> because, yay, Briley, I love you, sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, you stole it from Graham, okay. Well, listen, Jesus is alive. We serve a living Savior today. And what Peter's talking about, he, he said, we're, well, let me read that to you again, because it sounds like Peter's talking about baptism saves, but he said, the like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of filth, because water baptism can't put away filth. But being baptized into the body of Christ can. And you only do that by the shed blood of Christ. Amen. Okay, you want me to say that again? Yes, okay, so that you can, being baptized into the body of Christ will put away all that filth because you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. You've been baptized into the body of Christ. That's, I, now I can call him my Father. I can lay my petitions out for him. So Peter's not talking about water baptism. He's talking about baptism into the body of Christ. Um, and there are some folks that still today proclaim that baptism saves you. Trusting Christ as your Savior and being baptized, that saves you. And it's not true. You have to twist the, tr the Scriptures into a pretzel to get that from the Scriptures. Because it's not talking about Peter's. Peter clarified uh, and I, well, the Spirit of God is promoting, prompting Peter to write. And the Spirit of God knew that some, some man, if, um, if, the, if the Holy Spirit did not include the phrase, not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God, if the Holy Spirit knew that if he didn't put that in there, somebody was going to read that and says, uh-huh, I knew it, baptism can save you. But God's all wise. God knows what he's doing because God knows things we don't know. And God, the Holy Spirit said, no, Peter, you better write this in there too, buddy. Not the putting away of filth because the flesh is filthy. If you don't believe it, just look around. The flesh is filthy. And I think sometimes that the world is in competition to see if they can get, who can be more filthy than the next guy. My goodness, I remember when I was a kid going to the movie theaters because Saturday morning we could go down to the Bradley Theater in downtown Columbus and we could get in and it was all children's program. You could get in there for six RC Cola bottle caps. You had six RC Cola bottle caps. So you know what we did? We went to every gas station we could get, and we took a metal a, a, a magnet and stuck it down in there. You know where you open the bottles? You millennials have no idea what I'm talking about, but you open, <laughs> stuck it in there, and you open the bottle, and the bottle cap fell down in there. So we were pulling them out. And if it was RC Cola bottle cap, yep, because RC Cola was bottled in Columbus. They were the ones that were promoting this. And we'd get there, and we'd go, and we'd sit, and we'd watch that. But, you know, back um, uh, right around that same time, and, and my parents weren't afraid to let me go to that because they knew it was designed for children. So there wasn't going to be a bunch of filthy garbage on the screen. It was children. It was Roy Rogers. It was, I'm going to get in trouble saying this. It was cowboys and Indians. Not cowboys and commanders. Not cowboys and guardians. The Cleveland Indians are now the guardians. You knew that, right? Change their name. Well, anyway, we'd go and we'd watch that because my parents... And, and we were there from about 9 o'clock till noon. It was great babysitting for my mom and dad. So they'd drop us off and come back and get us. Anyway, um, but there came a time. It wasn't long after that, right around those days when I was growing up. That was about the time that Clark Gable, in Gone with the Wind, uttered the phrase that shocked the world. Frankly, my darling, everybody was shocked by that. But my brothers and sisters, it, 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 was, it was the chink in the dam that caused a flood. And my goodness, do you know that uh, now that's why they have 
Uh, that's why they have PG, PG-13, R, X, triple, all that kind of stuff because parents need to know. And, you know, there, there's some PG things that I'm looking at thinking, how in the world did this get a PG rating? I wouldn't let my kid watch this stuff. But it's, it's almost like a race these days in the, in the world we're living in. It seems like somebody's really stepped on the accelerator to see who can be more filthy than the next person. So the flesh is filthy. We need to be cleansed. We need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. And that's what makes us fit for heaven. Our soul was cleansed. And listen, we are, we are saved. We are sanctified by the Spirit of God. And we are, we are made fit for heaven. We, actually, we put on His righteousness. Because we were walking around in our righteousnesses. Isaiah says, and Isaiah in his day said that that was filthy. We need to be delivered from that. And so, and I'm thankful that the blood of Christ still does that. It's in the power of the proclamation of Christ and the power of his resurrection because, my brothers and sisters, he's not in the tomb anymore. We serve a risen Savior. You can, be, you can be happy in Jesus, or you can be, oh, well, so, so. You, listen, I'm telling you, there's coming a day when we're not going to be able to be as lackadaisical about our faith as we are, <clears throat> because there's, there, the world is getting worse every single day, and we, we're sitting here scratching our heads watching the news, thinking, can it get any worse? And the, the answer to that is, oh, yeah. Not only can it get worse, it's going to get worse. It's going to, oh, oh, my goodness, I almost used a Bud Fry phrase here. Uh, it's going to get worser as days go on. That's not a good English either, but, but it's, good, it's good preaching. Um, and then, look at verse 22. He talks about the ascension of Christ. Jesus went back to glory. Uh, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Now hold your place there in 1 Peter. And let me, let's go back to the book of Acts and let me show you what he's talking about. He's talking about when the disciples are standing around watching Jesus ascend back into glory. You remember that portion of scripture. Um, and he said to them, um, I'll find it here in just a second. Hang on. Found it. Being assembled together, verse 4 of Acts chapter 1, um, with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Um, the, what, what he's talking about there is you go, go to Jerusalem, you wait for the endowment of power of the Spirit of God, because that's what God's going to pour out in uh, upon them. Um, <clears throat> verse Verse 8, he says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. I was talking with a pastor friend of mine just the other day, and he said, you know, he said, when I first went to the church that I'm pastoring, he said, they didn't support any missionaries. He said, we're a missionary Baptist church. And he said, we didn't support any missionaries. And he said, uh, he said we do now. He said, but... I, I wondered and puzzled about that. And he said, finally, somebody, somebody came to me. He was talking to, talking to somebody. They um, came in and sat down in his office. It's always a joy when folks come in and sit down in your office. Anyway, he said, and they said, you know why we don't support missionaries? Because the Bible says we need to reach Jerusalem first. We haven't re reached Jerusalem, so we're not going to support any missionaries. My goodness, what a messed up philosophy that is. <clears throat> Hey, listen, we, Jesus said we're supposed to reach Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then the uttermost part of the earth, and I don't think he meant one at a time. I think he meant shotgun, go get them. And that's what, that's the idea. So he's telling them, he's commanding them to go. The Bible says, and while they looked steadfastly, he's talking about the disciples, looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, uh, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This 
same Jesus. Now listen, if, that, if, if anything makes you want to wave a handkerchief and say hallelujah, that should be it right there. This same Jesus, because now we, we know he's alive, and now he's saying he's coming back. He's not sending somebody to get his bride. He's coming to get the bride himself. Hallelujah. This same Jesus, which, he's, which is taken up from you uh, into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. And they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is from Jerusalem about a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were coming in, they went up in an upper room and abode with Peter, James, and John. And you know what they did there? They just had themselves a pouting party. Can you believe that? Jesus left us. I oh, he said something about sin and power of God and that kind of stuff. But, you know, he said he was coming back to get us. No, no, his, his angels told us that, that he was coming back to get us. And, uh, you know, it's just. Now, if you believe that, I've got some underwater property, offshore property to sell you. <clears throat> I don't believe that for a minute. I think from there, they, they were encouraged and they were ready to draw swords and charge and they were ready to go and uh, take the gospel to a lost world. Not sit around and hide. They did exactly what Jesus said. And then on the day of Pentecost, buddy, I mean, the doors were wide open. Peter stood up. Peter, the same Peter said, I will never deny you that Jesus said, yeah, you will. You're going to deny me three times before the night's done. Jesus said, not, uh, Peter said, not me, never. And Peter did exactly what Jesus said he was going to do. This same Peter stood up and just preached. Because preaching's important. Don't ever forget that. Preaching is important. You heard it here first. Because Jesus preached, I think preaching is important. Well, because he's alive, we need to serve. That leads me to share with you something I'll share with you week after next. <laughs> next week is Father's Day. We don't have Sunday evening service, but we will have. We will, and I'll share. I, I want to talk to you not only about the ministry of the Lord Jesus, but I want to talk to you about our ministry right here today. Peter addresses it, and, uh, and I hope that it will be an encouragement to you because we have a ministry, folks. Uh, it can't just be us four and no more. It's, it's got to be um, where we're reaching, reaching a community. You know, I was thankful when Debbie was telling me about <clears throat> Caroline could tell the story better than me. But when that lady came in with her daughter this morning, she had never been to church before in her life. And I thank God for Welcome Center people that welcomed them at the door. Amen. Thank you for being here. Let me show you where your Sunday school classes are. Because I personally have been in churches that I didn't have any idea where their Sunday school where my Sunday school class is supposed to be. Been in churches where nobody greeted you at the door. And truth of the matter is, I wondered if they even cared that we were there. But we care. Because Jesus cares. So lost people should be the focus. But you know, not just lost people. I'm getting ahead of myself, but listen, we want to we wanna reach lost people with the gospel. But you know what else we want to do? Come here, Brother Ron. Be my, be my example again. Come, come right up here. Here's a brother in Christ. <clears throat> now, this, what I'm about to say isn't true about Ron. But here's a brother in Christ that's gotten away from the Lord, hasn't been in church in a long time, and one day he just got convicted and he, and he, came, he came in the doors at Faith Baptist Church. And you know what he's looking for? He's looking for a group of believers that will love him, care about him, put their arm around him and say, Brother, we're glad you're here. Because right. he told me when he came in the door, he said, he said Preacher, I've, I've trusted Christ as my Savior. But I, I just I hadn't been in church in a long time, and I know I need to be in church. I need to get back in church. And, and instead of giving him a lecture, you know, you're wrong. You're just bad because you hadn't been in church like you ought to be. He's looking for somebody to put, his, put their arm around and say, just welcome home. 
That's what they're looking for. I'm telling you, they're looking for somebody that's going to love them, not just beat the snot out of them. That's not my job. Do you realize that? Thank you, Brother Ron. You're, you're a great preaching. Isn't <clears throat> um, do, you, do you realize that's not my job? My job is just to open the Word of God. And then whatever the Spirit of God does in your heart and your life, that's between you and God. And sometimes the Spirit of God just gets a hold of you, doesn't he? Turns you inside out. He does me. And I'm telling you, he'll do the same if you'll just let him. You know, I, sometimes I have people go out the door saying, Man, preacher, you stepped on my toes today. And I'm thinking, wasn't me? <laughs> if your toes got stepped on, then it was the Spirit of God that did it. So how did you respond to that? Now, I try to be kind. My response is, my pastor there was a lady one time in my home church in Columbus, Georgia. He, was, he hadn't been there long. He preached a message she didn't like. When she walked out the door, she told him so. I didn't like what you preached this morning. And he looked her in the eyes, and he, and he called her by name. And he said, the devil didn't like it either. So you go home, get your heart right, and come back tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Devil never likes any, any truth that comes out of this book. Amen. Now, you know what the devil doesn't mind? He doesn't mind the, the opinions and the philosophies of men. He doesn't care. Hey, listen, I could stand here behind this desk right here week after week and just preach to you the opinion of men and the devil wouldn't care. But you know, nothing, nothing godly would happen in this place either. Because what I want to see is I want to see those, those guys that, that have wandered away. That, that feel that they and know that they need to get back in God's house and they walk in the door and God's people not just standing around looking at them. Like, hey, hey. I told you a story about, about the lady in First Baptist Church in Hammond, Jack Hiles, while he was alive and pastoring that church. There was a lady that came in one night. She was in ragged clothes. And she, she, just, she just wandered in, went up in the balcony and sat in the balcony, sat by herself pastor's wife found out she was there so she went up there and sat with her just sat with her you know that's all it took that's all it took was for one Christian she didn't know she was the pastor's wife it took one Christian to sit down and show some love and compassion to somebody and that's what God's looking for Amen. God's looking for folks that'll just love people and care about people. And then help them to get back on the rails where they, where they got off. I don't know how many years ago. I don't know how many years ago this guy got off the rails. It could have been a year. It could have been 20. I don't know. But he, he knew. Because you see, the Spirit of God works on the heart of God's people. Amen. That's called conviction. And we know what's right to do because the Spirit of God tells us when what we did was wrong. That's conviction. So he wanders in here. He shouldn't be met at the door with, he ain't dressed right. Go home and get dressed right and come back. Never. Let's don't ever let that happen here. No, sir. Let me tell you why. Because somebody shows up here, man, I tell you, when we were in Newport, Richie, we had little bus kids. I know I told you this, that would come off the bus Sunday morning and Wednesday night. I mean, these little guys, they picked them up, and the little girls had on, had on tattered dresses and come in, there, come in there barefoot, smelled like they hadn't had a bath in a week, you know. And, and you, know what our, you know what our children's workers did when they found out the needs? They bought dresses and shoes, things like that, Lord, so, that these, so that these little kids could see the hands and the feet of Jesus. So that you just, hey, these little kids, they come in. Hey, listen, a lot of them come and get saved. They go home and tell their mom and daddy that they, they invited Jesus into their heart. These are kids, these are kids that didn't know the name of Jesus other than a, than a curse word. 
That's, that's how they knew Jesus. And they were sitting in these classes on Wednesday night and on Sunday school and junior church on Sunday morning. And they heard a teacher talk about the love of Jesus and how Jesus loves them. And Jesus gave his life for them. And those little kids get saved. Oh, man, that's nothing sweeter than that. And they go home and tell their mom and daddy, crawl up in their lap, and say, I just asked Jesus into my heart to be my Savior today. What a wonderful thing that is. Gives you opportunity after opportunity to reach into those homes. Show them the love of Jesus, and that's what I want us to do. That's ministry for us. And we're going to talk more about that week after next. We're going to talk about ministering to the Spring Hill community that God's put us in. Let's stand together, please. Father, I love you. Thank you for just the opportunity to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you for my church family. I'm so thankful for folks that love you and that want to serve you, want to see something happen right here in this place. So, Father, I pray that you would help us to keep our eyes on Jesus. Your word admonishes us that where there is no vision, the people perish. And, Lord, we don't want to see anybody die and go to hell. Lord, we want to be able to share the truth of the scriptures with them and show them that we love them and that we care about them. And Father, I just pray that you would help us to always be a church like that. Father, help us to always be a church that will stand on the foundations of the word of God. Not get off on the philosophies of men. That, that doesn't mean anything to anybody. But the truth of the scriptures does. And Father, I, should, I pray tonight for my church family that, Lord, you would take the things that we share tonight, drive those truths home in our hearts and our lives so that we can be what we ought to be, not just as a church, but as an individual. And Father, I, I pray for that one. Lord, there may be someone in this building tonight, I don't know, that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior. And Lord, maybe has a question mark about their salvation. Lord, I just pray that you would Allow them to come this evening so they can get that taken care of. Lord, there may be somebody on the live stream tonight who doesn't know Jesus. Father, I pray that they would be willing to turn from their sin and ask Jesus into their heart to be their Savior. Bless this time of invitation, Lord. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. What are we singing, Tim? Take up thy cross and follow me, I heard my master say. I gave my life to ransom thee, surrender your all today. Wherever he leads, I'll go. So wherever he leads, I'll go. Bow your heads and close your eyes with me, please. Christians, you're praying. My friends, those of you that are watching us on live stream tonight, thank you. Thank you for joining our service. We're so glad that you did. We hope it was a blessing and an encouragement to you. And my friend, if, if, you're, if you have question marks in your heart about your salvation, don't know for sure where you're going to spend eternity, then we, we would like to help you with that. Um, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus loves you that much that he left the beauties of heaven, came to a sin-cursed world, died on an old rugged cross, was buried and rose again the third day just for you and for me. That's the gospel. And he'll save all that will call upon him. That's what the Bible says. And my friend, if you're ready and willing to turn from your sin and turn to the Savior, then it's as simple as praying a prayer, something like, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and be my Savior. In Jesus' name. Now, friend, if you invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, please send us a note on the live stream and let us know that because we'd love to rejoice with you. And if you'd let us, we'd love to share some, uh, we'd love to share some, materials with you that will help you to grow in Christ. So God bless you. Thank you for joining our service tonight. And God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. Uh, we are here Wednesday evening.
and uh, we're going to we're going to still be in Acts chapter 19 Wednesday. Uh, didn't get very far. Got all the way through seven whole verses Wednesday evening, but we got some other things in chapter chapter 19 to to discuss. And uh, I know this is supposed to be a survey. My wife and I were talking about that at lunch just this past week, and I was talking about how wasn't going to get very far in Acts chapter 19 and all that stuff. She said, well, just preach it. <laughs> she said, just preach it. I thought, oh, well, okay, so I'm, doing, I'm, I'm obeying my wife. <laughs> uh, but we'll have a good time in the house of the Lord on Wednesday evening, Acts chapter 19. So class, there's your assignment. You need to go home and read Acts chapter 19. You'll be blessed. You may laugh along the way, and you'll be encouraged. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. You'll have to discover that for your own. And then we'll talk about it Wednesday evening. I hope you're here for that. Um, cookies. That's all I'm going to say is cookies. And fellas, pennies. Pennies, fellas, pennies. Pennies. I'm not giving my wife equal time, but pennies, guys. <laughs> so help me with that. By the way. The magic number for, for our vacation offering, Bible school offering for Debbie and I both to get uh, honeyed and feathered or slimed or whatever in the world they're going to do to us this year uh, is $3,000. Now, the last two or three years, we've hit that number, and so both of us have gone home sticky, sticky yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, and uh, our missionaries are the beneficiaries of that. None of that, we, we keep none of that, zero. Uh, every... <laughs> Every last penny goes to the mission field, really does. And um, so if, if you can't be here and you want to send your pennies to the boys' bucket, then please send them in. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> please pray for Bible school and God's... Uh, he's being instructed by his little sister. All right, let's pray together. Hope you have a wonderful week. Let's serve the Lord together, and I'll look forward to seeing you Wednesday evening. Father, thank you again for loving us the way that you do.